Whether it's running, cycling or swimming, group sports are making a comeback. And that's something that Alex Rose and Sam Brown were counting on as the founders of online sports events booking platform Let's Do This. They claim that it is the world's largest marketplace for mass participation sports and have already drawn in investment from sporting stars like Serena Williams and Usain Bolt. I think we're a bit of a rarity in, in starting a tech company as two non-technical people. Rose and Brown knew each other from childhood, but became good friends while studying at the UK's University of Cambridge. Both keen runners and cyclists, they founded Let's Do This in July 2017, following a conversation at the pub about how difficult it was to find and sign up for races. Brown was already working in the sports industry, having co-founded adventure travel company IGO Adventures, while Rose was working as an associate at a management consultancy. When did you decide to quit your full-time jobs and what gave you the confidence to take the plunge to do that? We probably sort of set about it with a combination of naivety and, and overconfidence and I think looking back on it if we knew half the things we knew now about the obstacles you know that you have to overcome to start a business I, I wonder whether we would have would have quit our jobs to do it. I think also caught me at a point where I knew I really hated the job that I had at the moment and suddenly the obstacles in starting a new company suddenly didn't seem so terrifying. So they decided to set up Let's Do This. The one-stop platform enables people to find information on and book onto endurance events across the UK. To cover the initial startup costs, the pair raised £150,000 from a network of London-based angel investors, mostly amateur athletes. However, they soon realised that this wouldn't be enough to cover the costs of hiring software engineers to build the initial platform. So they raised a further £1 million, mostly from the same group of investors. You had to talk to a lot of people to you know, to find people who are interested. But if you can find a problem that, that people are passionate about, then, you know, there are always people who are willing to, to back exciting ideas. In 2018, Rose and Brown moved to Palo Alto in California to complete the prestigious Y Combinator Startup Accelerator program, along with another six members of the team. Y Combinator has been the launching pad for major names like Airbnb and Reddit. That's when things really began to take off. Then this guy, Pete Flint, led a $5 million seed funding round for the company in August 2018. Flint is general partner for venture capital firm NFX and is known for being the co-founder of online real estate marketplace Trulia, which was bought by its competitor Zillow in 2015. Tennis legend Serena Williams and Olympic gold medalist Usain Bolt also invested in the seed round. That came about because Serena is married to a guy called Alexis Ahanian, who is one of the co-founders of Reddit and was part of a very, very early batch of Y Combinator. And he actually got in touch with us halfway through in one of those emails that you can't quite believe you've received, you know, coming from, without a doubt, one of the most famous, well-connected alumni um, of the, of the programme, saying that he'd just done his first Spartan race and loved what we were building and would be really interested to hear more. And then at the end of Y Combinator, when you pitched to investors, um, he got back in touch about the opportunity to invest. And at that point, I think we went back to him and said, look, we'd obviously love to take investment from you but you also happen to be married to one of if not the greatest female sportswoman ever usain investment was a another story where sam my co-founder i think had seen that he was in london opening a bar and actually went to the bar opening himself and managed to corner <laughs> corner usain bolt and persuade him to have dinner with him and pitch the idea to him then and, and and it went from there a real example of hustling your way into into the right investor meeting since Rose and Brown set up Let's Do This, the company has raised just over $31 million. The London-based company now has 65 employees, up from about 25 members of staff in early 2021. And a passion for sport is deeply ingrained in the company's culture, with Olympic gold medal rower Constantine Louloudis working as Vice President of Sales and Business Operations. But growing the business hasn't been without its issues. The coronavirus pandemic forced the UK to go into lockdown in 2020 and 2021, shutting down mass participation events like marathons and triathlons. That dealt a blow to Let's Do This, which at the time listed 18,000 of these kind of endurance events, making its money from commission on the tickets that are sold through the platform. 
the firm saw revenues crash at the start of the pandemic, prompting Rose and Brown to cut their own pay by 70%, as well as asking employees to take a 20% reduction in salary. They were also forced to close down their office in San Francisco. What impact did the coronavirus pandemic have on the business? Sort of hard to overstate the impact that it had on the business. It was, you know, it was pretty dramatic when it happened. The whole market uh, that we operate in had to stop. Overnight, there were suddenly no bookings coming through the platform, revenue dropped to zero. Um, but I think, to be honest with you, our concern at the time was, was almost more for the market that we were in and the organisers that we're working with than it was for us. We were, we were lucky enough to have done our Series A round of funding a few months before the pandemic happened and therefore we knew we had a, cash, you know, a bank account full of cash that would see us through but it was much more about what was this gonna to do to the market? How long was this gonna last? So in a move that kept the business going, they pivoted into virtual event signups. Over the summer of 2021, group sports events returned as the UK government lifted coronavirus social distancing measures. As a result, Let's Do This has seen a rebound in business with 15,000 events now listed on the platform and ticket sales doubling week on week for a period of around six months. Rose is confident this growth will continue as outdoor exercise remains popular beyond the pandemic. Lockdown has shifted how people exercise. You've seen, you've seen such a sh huge shift to you know, at-home connected fitness. If you look at the, the sales around, you know, whether it's trainers, sneaker sales, or, um, or, or bikes, you, know, they are, you can't buy a road bike at the moment. They're all sold out. There's never been so much demand. And so whilst I think there's still some nervousness about people booking events. If you look at the broader trends that are generally upstream of that, whether it's the number of people who downloaded Strava, you know, which is which is sort of three times what it's ever been historically, or the fact that, that sales of, of sports equipment have gone through the roof, I think as we come out the other end, we're expecting next year to be to be you know, a bigger year than the industry's ever seen. Exercise tracking app Strava said that 1.1 billion activities were uploaded to its platform globally in 2020, up by a third on the previous year. You've seen how young people, particularly young people today, want to invest in experiences beyond objects. And then we've seen this wave of growth in um, athleticism. You know, it's both sort of the, the sort of serious triathlete as well as the sort of you know, a 5k trot on a on a Sunday afternoon. So it's just this, you know, people are increasing healthy. And as it turns out, you know, that's just accelerated during COVID. Um, and you walk the streets, or you on the commute, you see so many people on the move. What are the opportunities and the challenges to the global group sports events market? The opportunity is, is huge. The internet loves ticketing businesses. Some of the challenges is just pulling this massive information together, as well as providing a level of information that gives you a kind of point of view, like what's the right thing for me? Plus just growing a business. Um, it's just trying to figure out how to grow a business. So what's next for the entrepreneurs? What's next for us is, is going internationally. And that starts with going to the US um, in January of next year and then expanding on from there. I think we've shown a model and we've shown some traction in the UK that, that can be applied to, to the same market all over the world. And then I think eventually, I think our mission goes way beyond running and cycling and triathlon. We want to be the online company that gets everyone offline. <laughs>